Welcome to Recap Movies. Today, we will recap the movie, Hatchy, A Dog's Tale. Stay tuned to the end as we reveal the lessons from this movie. The film starts in a middle school where kids are telling their class about their heroes. That's when Ronnie gets up and tells the class that his hero's name is Hatchy, and he used to be his grandfather's dog. He tells the class the remarkable story of this dog. Hatchy's story starts a long time ago, in a Buddhist monastery. A monk puts a collar around his neck, and they ship him off to the airport. From Japan, Hatchy is flown all the way to America. He is then put on a train that brings him to a small town, where this little puppy is being transferred on a trolley. However, Hatchy's cage falls from the trolley, and he sneaks off of it. The little puppy wanders around the train station, and that's when Parker sees him for the first time. Parker is a middle-aged man who doesn't want to leave this puppy out in the cold. He goes to the station manager, Carl, and asks him to keep the puppy until someone comes back for him. But Carl says the dog can't stay inside the station. Parker has no choice but to take Hatchie home with him. He gets home late, but Hatchie is in his study. He tries to tell his wife, Kate, about the whole situation, but she just takes him upstairs because she's tired. Hatchy is a curious little dog and gets out of the study and walks upstairs to Parker's bedroom. Parker's telling his wife about the dog when Hatchy suddenly licks Kate's toes and she freaks out. She doesn't want a dog in her house, so Parker takes Hatchy to the tool shed and places him inside a makeshift bed. He makes sure that Hatchy will stay warm throughout the night and after this, he goes back inside. The next morning, Parker's daughter, Andy, is playing with Hatchy and she is in love with this little puppy. Parker doesn't want to send Hatchy away either, but Kate takes pictures of the little dog and makes posters. So, Parker spends the entire morning going around town and hanging posters. He goes to a bookshop and asks the owner if he would like a new dog, but her cat is very aggressive towards Hatchy. So, Parker has to leave. He even takes Hatchy to the dog pound, but the guy working there tells Parker that the pound is already overpopulated. Parker has no choice but to take Hatchy with him at work. Parker is a music professor, and during his rehearsal, Hatchy walks around the stage, and Parker is starting to like him. He shows the torn out receipt to his Japanese friend, Ken, who says that Hatchy is a special dog. He also points out the name Hatchy on the dog's collar, which means number eight. Ken tells Parker that Hatchy is most likely a royal dog that got lost. That night, Parker has another argument with Kate about the puppy, and things get worse when Hatchy accidentally breaks Kate's house model. So, Parker has to put Hatchy in the shed again that night. Around midnight, however, Parker takes Hatchy back inside the house, because there's a storm coming. They both spend the night sitting on the couch, watching TV and eating popcorn. The next morning, Parker spends the entire day teaching Hatchy how to fetch the ball. Kate and her daughter see how happy Parker looks while playing with Hatchy. Kate receives a call from someone who wants to adopt the dog, but she declines the offer. She knows that Parker will be heartbroken if Hatchy is gone. A few years go by, and Hatchy is now a full-grown Akita dog. He follows Parker around all the time. When Parker goes to the office, Hatchy even digs under the fence to follow Parker to the train station. Eventually, Parker has to bring Hatchy back to the house and leave him under Kate's supervision. Hatchy is much calmer around Kate, and she has become fond of him as well. One evening, Hatchy just leaves the house and walks to the train station. He just sits down in front of the station entrance. When Parker gets out of the station that day, he is surprised to see Hatchy, who quickly jumps for some petting. The hot dog vendor, Jasreet, tells Parker that Hatchy has been sitting there for some time now. Some days later, Andy and her partner Mitchell are at Parker's house for some barbecue. Mitchell is a shy man who's kind of nervous while talking to Parker. He tries his best to make Hachi fetch the ball, but Parker explains that Hachi doesn't like doing it. Parker discusses this with Ken during their kendo practice, and Ken says that Akita is a very proud breed of dogs. He explains that Hachi only waits for Parker because he has a special connection with him. The next day, Parker allows Hachi to accompany him to the station and they have a lot of fun on their way. After Parker leaves for work, Hatchy goes back to the house without any problem. However, he is still waiting for Parker in the evening outside the station. This becomes the routine for both of them, and in the next couple of years, Hatchy and Parker spend a lot of time exploring the area around the house by taking long walks and even enjoying the snow. The dog has become an integral part of their family, 
and he's even present in Andy's wedding photographs. Then, one day, Parker gets out of the station, but Hatchie isn't there. Parker goes to a nearby theater where Kate is working on some restorations, and he asks about Hatchie, but she hasn't seen him either. Parker compliments Kate's work before going back home. He's calling Hatchie's name when he sees the dog barking at a skunk that's in the tool shed. Parker is very careful around the skunk, and he tries to cover it with a box, but the duo gets covered in the skunk's smelly urine. When Kate gets back home, she finds Parker sitting in the bathtub with Hatchie, trying to wash off the smell. A few days later, Andy returns home and tells Kate that she's having a baby. Her mother is extremely happy, and Andy quickly runs out to give Parker the news, while he's giving Hatchie a massage. He too is over the moon after hearing this great news, and Hatchie is watching him laugh with his daughter. Parker is a great husband who's been married to Kate for 25 years. He knows that Kate has been working too hard, so he plans a romantic evening for her while they have some drinks and talk about their future. However, the very next day, something is wrong because Hatchie doesn't want to go to the station with Parker. Parker decides to go by himself, but Hatchie starts barking at him. So Parker gives him a hug and leaves. Hatchie holds a ball in his mouth and follows Parker to the station and Parker is surprised to see him. He throws the ball and asks Hatchie to fetch, and he's overjoyed that Hatchie actually fetched the ball. He brags about this to Carl and even Jess Reed, and they're all congratulating him. But Hatchie still doesn't want Parker to go, so Parker gives him a big hug and gets on the train, while Hatchie watches the train leave. That afternoon, Parker is telling his students about a musician who didn't want his music to be recorded. He's explaining how some things are much better right in the moment of their creation. He doesn't look too well, and he has to sit down on a chair, but he just falls down and dies. Hatchie waits for Parker outside the station until midnight when Michael finally comes and takes him back home. The next morning, Andy tells him that Parker is gone, but he will try to take care of him just like Parker did. While the family attends to the funeral, Hatchie is still sitting outside the station in the extreme cold and Carl tells him to go home because Parker isn't coming back. A few months later, Kate has sold her home and she's moving away, so Hatchie is going to stay with Andy and Michael. They take him to their house, but one day, Hatchie just runs away while Michael chases after him. Hatchie starts walking on the train tracks and keeps following them until it's dark. He takes shelter underneath an abandoned locomotive, and in the morning, he goes right back to the station where everyone is happy to see him again. Jess Reed even feeds him some food because Hatchie looks hungry. They call Andy and Michael, who get there and take Hatchie back to their home. However, Andy knows that Hatchie isn't feeling well and she tells him that she loves him, but if he wants to go, she will allow it. So she opens the fence door and Hatchie licks her hand before running back to the station. He sits in front of the door all day and sleeps under the locomotive at night. The local vendors and shopkeepers feed him because they all love the dog. Hatchie has become a celebrity among the travelers who go through the station. Then, one day, a reporter asks Carl about Hatchie. Carl explains how Hatchie's owner died a year ago, and he's been coming back to the station ever since. The reporter takes pictures of Hatchie and prints a heartful story about the faithful dog. From then on, Hatchie starts receiving gifts sent by the people from all over the city. One day, Ken comes there to meet him. He tells the vendor that he read the story and he knew Hatchie's owner, Parker. He's happy to know that Hatchie is being taken care of. He tells the dog, in Japanese, that he should wait for his master only if he wants to. Hatchie spends many seasons sitting in front of the door of the train station. Nine years later, Kate comes back to that town. She sees the theater that they renovated and even checks out her old house. She meets Ken at Parker's grave. Hatchie, on the other hand, has become an old dog. He doesn't have his bright fur anymore and he looks tired, but he still comes to the station every day. Kate sees him on her way back to the station and she just can't believe her eyes. She spends a few hours with him before going back home. She tells his grandson, Ronnie, about Hatchie and all the beautiful memories their family shared with that dog. The same Christmas, Hatchie is lying outside the station and dreaming about all the days he had shared with Parker. Just like that, this faithful dog passes away. Ronnie tells the class that he feels a connection to Hatchie and his grandfather due to this story. In fact, he has adopted a dog for himself and he spends a lot of time with his pet. 
The film ends with telling us the real Hatchie spent nine years from 1925 to 1934, waiting for his dead master in Japan. And now there's a statue for him. Well, this movie shows us everything about love and loyalty, values that are often forgotten in our modern day society. Hachiko, you made me cry and further affirm how love and loyalty is so important in our lives. Thank you, Hachiko. May you always take wonderful rebirths again and again.